Okay, so just like last time, we have this video clip right here that shows a moving subway train going by, and then someone walks past the camera right afterwards. And our goal today is to replicate the same effect where the text appears as the train goes by and then disappears as this person walks past the camera. But we're gonna do all of this on the Fusion page. Now, as you remember from last time, we did all of this on the edit page using Text Plus. Although Text Plus itself is powered by Fusion, it's not really the same as doing this actually on the Fusion page. So now to get started, the first thing we're gonna do is to select the actual video clip first. And then once the video clip is selected, we're simply just gonna switch to the Fusion page. And once we're on the Fusion page, the first thing we're gonna do is to select the text node and then just drop the node in between the in and out node. And now we have no system set up and ready to go. Now I wanna explain Fusion a little bit just before we move any further. The way it works is that Fusion itself is a node-based system. So everything is done using nodes. And we always start out with in and out nodes. An in node shows what the original video clip and the out node shows what the original video clip would look like after we apply all the special effects. So in between the in and out nodes, that's where we're throwing all our little special effects and you can get super creative with this. Okay, so now knowing that, the first thing we're gonna do is to add our text by going to style text box and typing dynamic text. And you can type in anything you like here. It doesn't really matter. I'm also gonna go ahead and make the text a little bit larger so that it's more visible to us. And I'm also gonna change the location of the text as well by simply just dragging the green circle. And I'm just gonna change and make the text uh, kind of sit right on top of the platform. Okay, so now the next thing I'm also gonna do is to change the color of the text as well. I wanna change it to yellow so that it creates a much, a much nicer uh, contrast against the, uh, the black and white background. Okay, so once all this is done, the next thing I'm gonna do is to locate the write-on feature by simply scroll to the bottom. And so as you can see now, the write-on feature is really what's going to uh, allow us to make each character appear and disappear. And uh, by changing the range of control, along with keyframing is really what's going to allow us to decide precisely at what point in the video we want the character to start appear or disappear. Okay, so now the first, we're gonna get started creating the actual effect. The first thing we're gonna do is to uh, set our initial keyframe and we're gonna make everything disappear at this point. Okay, so now the next thing we're gonna do is then move to the next frame and now we're gonna change the range control a little bit, move it a little bit over so that the first character starts to appear. And then we're gonna move to the next frame and then we're gonna move the range control a little bit over so that the next character starts to appear. So as you can see, we're just gonna repeat this process for the rest of this text. And this is important, although this may seem a little bit repetitive, but this is really important for us because we're trying to create this effect where we want this moving train to look like you know, it's making this text appear. So it's important that we uh, evaluate each frame and determine if at that particular frame, we want the character to start appear or disappear. Okay, so now another thing I wanna point out at this point is that as you can see, as you may have noticed, as I change the range control, uh, it is automatically uh, keyframed. So you don't, every time you change the range control, you don't have to manually set a keyframe. Uh, so another, that's another great thing about write on feature is that it's automatically uh, keyframeable. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish the second part and it works exactly the same as the first, except now we want each character to start disappear as this person walks past the camera. So once all this is done, then we're gonna have a look at what our end result looks like. Okay, so this looks pretty good. This looks exactly like what we did last time. Okay, perfect. So now next thing we're gonna look at is what else we can do on this Fusion page that make it so much better than working with just Text Plus on the edit page. On the Fusion page, one of the coolest things we can do is to add a lot of customization, a lot of different special effects to the text to give it a little bit more texture. One of which we're gonna be looking at today is the blur effect. And to do that, we're gonna to go to tools and then we're gonna to go to blur. And now we're just gonna grab the blur node and drop it between merge and text. And then we're also gonna go ahead and adjust the blur size a little bit. 
And right away, you're gonna see that this entire text is, is, is blurred out and it has this really cool mystic feel to it. Now the problem though is that this entire text is blurred out. We only want certain parts of the text to be blurred out. So to do that, we're gonna be leveraging masking. And one of the tools we can use to create that, to create masking is rectangle node. So we're gonna grab the rectangle node and just drop it next to blur node and then connect to the blur node. So right away, you're gonna see that only the text that is contained within the rectangular box is blurred out. Everything, uh, the, the text that is outside of it is just still the plain text. So this along with uh, the uh, center parameter, which is pretty much just location, uh, controlling the location of this box, uh, as well as keyframing, is really what's going to allow us to determine at what point we want the blur effect to be applied to each character. All right, so to get started, the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and set up our keyframe. And at this point, I want the rectangular box to remain in place. And we're gonna move to the next frame, and I still want this rectangular box to remain in place at this point. And then we're gonna move to the next frame. And at this point, I wanna move the rectangular box a little bit over to the left because I want the first character to start clear up. Okay, so now we're gonna move to the next frame. And at that point, I want the second character to start clear up. So we're gonna repeat, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and repeat this for the rest of this text. But the idea is that, you know, when the character first appears, we want the blur effect to stay in place. But as the train moves further and further away, we want the characters to start uh, clear up, to become clear. So eventually the entire text is gonna, be, uh, is gonna become clear. And now one thing you're gonna notice right away as we are uh, doing this is that it's just like how it is with right on, you know, as we change the, uh, the location, the center parameter, uh, it is automatically key, uh, uh, keyframable. So you don't have to manually keyframe every time you change the, the, uh, the location of the rectangular box. So this is a huge advantage. All you need to worry about is changing the location as the frame changes. Okay, so now the second part, it works pretty much the same, except now as the subject approaches the character, we want it to become blurry. And then eventually, of course, it will get kicked out as the uh, subject passes that character. Okay, so once all this is done, we're gonna go ahead and have a look at the end result. So you're gonna notice right away that we have this really cool special effect, uh, blurry effect as the character first appears or is about to disappear. So it definitely gives a little bit more texture. To give the text even more texture, we're gonna go ahead and add another effect to the text. And we're gonna grab the soft glow node and just drop it between merge and blur node. And you're gonna see right away that the text is now has this soft glowy effect around it. And uh, now we're gonna also go ahead and create our masking effect just used by using the rectangular box and connect it to the soft glow node. So you're gonna see right away that, that only the text that is contained within this box has this soft glowy effect. So the idea is the same as with the blur effect. We want only certain part of the text to have this effect. And uh, okay, so to get started, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is just like with blur effect, we're gonna go ahead and set uh, our initial keyframe. And the idea is the same here is that when the tech, when the character first appears, we don't want we want this you know glow the glowy effect to stay in place. But as the the, the train moves further and further away, we want this uh, the the glowy effect. Uh, to go away just like uh, you know with the blur effect now one thing you're going to notice is that just like with the blur effect as well as the write on that the parameter itself the, the center parameter is automatically keyframable so as you uh, move this uh, you know as you change the location of the rectangular box of the masking it's going to automatically keyframe for you okay so once all this is done we're just going to go ahead and uh, let this render and uh, we're gonna have a look at what the end result is gonna look like. So now that we have the blur as well as the soft glow effect added to the text. Okay, this looks so much better, right? So it definitely has this really cool texture uh, to it, you know, rather than just a simple plain text. Okay, so I hope this helps, guys. Hope really, you, uh, you know, you get to see what are the cool things we can do on the Fusion page.